So now that we understand redox reactions and that redox reactions are made up of two half reactions, a oxidation and reduction, now we want to go inside of there and actually look at what's going on with these two half reactions. And the main way that we do that is by making electrochemical cells. So we are going to separate the two half reactions. So literally we're going to have two beakers, uh, one half reaction in one, the other half reaction in the other, and we're going to connect those two so that only the electrons flow from one, uh, one container to the other. And with this, we can measure what the voltage is, and so we can understand what's going on with each half reaction um, in a much more detailed fashion. So overall, what we're going to be looking at is, um, does a given redox reaction occur? So if I put these two um, half cells together, that's what we're going to call them, and make an electrochemical cell, will the electrons flow? And that, that, that's not always a given. Just because I put two things together doesn't necessarily mean they're going to share electrons the way that I want. And so we need to come up with a way of understanding the, um, molecules' ability to give up or gain electrons and combining these two things together overall will a, a given redox reaction occur. So really what we're leading into is um, a discussion on electrode potential and that is a property that is re related to the reduction tendency of a species. So this is where it gets a little interesting. Even though that we have reductions and oxidation reactions, when we list these things in sort of a table, we always talk about a species ability in terms of its reduction. So we will talk about this later. And the reason why is, is we know that we can easily turn the reaction around and turn it into an oxidation. So just for simplification, when you go and look up uh, potentials for a given reaction, they're always going to show it as a reduction. So by definition, electro electrode potential is related to the reduction tendency of the species that are involved. And it's up to us to understand, am I dealing with a reduction or an oxidation? And if I'm dealing with an oxidation, we need to flip the reaction. So we're going to talk about that right now. So if I have my two half reactions, oxidation and reduction, I want to know between those two, what's the ability or a measure of the ability for one thing to give up electrons and what's the measure of the ability for another thing to gain electrons. And it's those two things together that overall allow my uh, redox reaction to occur. So I need to look at what's called the electrode potential for each half reaction and then realize that those two half reactions are going to be combined together. So we make an electrochemical cell. Once again, that is where I put the two half reactions in different containers. And then we're going to find out, you know, we can uh, connect it with a wire and we make it so that only electrons are being transferred. There's some more to that, but we will get to it. So in particular, we're going to be looking at what's called galvanic cells. These are electrochemical cells that actually produce electrical current. So that means that as written, the electrons are going to flow. This doesn't always uh, happen. We will tell this is what we're getting to is how can I tell theoretically will electrons flow or will they not? That's what we're talking about right now. So what happens is, is I start with a given redox reaction and then I make those two half reactions separate. And so I build the half reactions in two different containers. So I've given you a redox reaction here where I have a zinc solid reacting with copper two plus to make copper solid and zinc two plus. And typically with our half cells, the half cell is going to consist of a strip of metal. That's an electrode. So you've heard the electrode used quite a bit. And when we talk about redox reactions, uh, the most common ones are involving metals because you know we're dealing with electrons, we want things that can conduct electricity. So the metals that are involved are gonna make my electrodes. So zinc solid and copper solid, those are gonna be my two electrodes. I'm gonna take literally a chunk of zinc and a chunk of copper and attach a wire to it, and then I'm going to put it in a solution that contains the corresponding ionic species. So I'm going to have copper solid. I'm going to put it into a solution of copper two plus. Same thing with zinc. I'm going to have a zinc electrode attached to a wire and I'm going to put it into a solution of zinc two plus. So uh, remember, you know, you can't really have copper two plus or zinc two plus floating around. So I have to have some uh, counter ion and there's a lot of variability here. I need to make a soluble salt. So in this case, we're using copper 
uh, copper two nitrate and zinc nitrate. Um, I could use sulfates or other soluble salts. Uh, so there's some variability, but really I just make, need to make sure that my solution contains copper two plus on one side and zinc two plus on the other side. So this is what we're looking at so far. And we're gonna add some details with it. I have separated my two half reactions into two different beakers, literally. I put some solution inside of there. I have a zinc electrode, it's literally just a piece of zinc, a copper electrode, just a piece of copper. And I've put them into solution with these salts. So this is a, a source of zinc two plus. This is a source of copper minus. And really all that's going to happen is a movement of electrons. So that's the basic basis of a redox reaction is electrons are going to move. And we'll talk about this in a little bit more detail, but what's gonna happen is electrons are going to move and we're going to read those or play around with them. There's another piece involved here called the salt bridge and we'll get to that in just a second, but this is basically what my electrochemical cell looks like is I have broken the two half reactions and I've made it so that if these two half reactions are going to react in a redox reaction, electrons need to move. So let's take a closer look at what's going on if I was to cause this to be a redox reaction. If the redox reaction moves forward, exactly what's going, going on here, and then there's some terminology we also need to learn. So I've given you the overall redox reaction, and like other redox reactions, there are two half reactions going on, an oxidation reduction. And that's what I've done is I've separated the oxidation and reduction into two different containers. So I need to remember that both of these things are going on. So when I look at this, on the right hand side, we have one half reaction, copper two plus gaining two electrons to become copper solid. And then on the left hand side, we have zinc uh, solid going to make zinc two plus. And these two together, these two half reactions, come together to form the overall redox reaction. So on the left hand side, and this is just by convention, we typically put the oxidation reaction on the left hand side when we draw out electrochemical cells. So this is the oxidation and the reduction half reaction is going to be on the right hand side. But even though we've drawn out these two half reactions, really what is going on inside of my electrochemical cell? So there are two types of interactions. So each half reaction is gonna be doing something a little bit different. On the right hand side, in the right hand container, metal ions are gonna be gaining electrons from the electrode to form solid metal on the electrode. So copper two plus is floating around in solution. When the copper two plus touches the electrode, it's gonna gain two electrons and so it's gonna become copper solid. And that copper solid literally lands on the surface of the electrode. So as this redox reaction is going on, the copper electrode is gaining more copper solid. It's getting larger. So on the right hand side of the reaction, so remember this is a reduction, gaining electrons. The copper two plus ions are being reduced. They're gaining electrons. And then by convention, the electrode that is used for the reduction half reaction is called the cathode. So You've probably heard of an anode and a cathode, so we're gonna define those, and I'll give you a way of remembering which one is which here in just a second. But the oxidation side, the electrode on the oxidation half reaction is called the cathode. So on the other half reaction, the, the electrode literally dissolves. So zinc solid inside of my electrode is going to form zinc two plus, which is going into the solution plus two electrons. So over time, as this redox reaction moves forward, the uh, electrode is dissolving. If I let it go long enough, the electrode will almost completely dissolve into solution. So this is going, this zinc solid is my electrode and it is dissolving into solution. When I look at this, loss of electrons is oxidation. So this is my oxidation half reaction. The zinc metal is being oxidized. It means it's a losing electron. And by definition, the electrode in the oxidation half reaction is called the anode. So remember we have an anode and a cathode. The way I remember this is that anode, I remember A, N, A negative, that the anode is um, correlates with the reaction that is producing electrons. So we're producing something that's negatively charged. So that's how I remember it, the anode, um, The anode electrode 
corresponds to the reaction that's producing electro the electrons, A and A negative. So overall, what's happening in this electrochemical cell is electrons are produ being produced at the anode and they are moving to the cathode. And in order to do this, we need a couple of, uh, couple of additional things. So I have my two containers. Well, I need to connect those two containers with a wire. So I need some way for electrons to flow from one thing to another. So I connect them actually with a wire. So this is where we uh, are at now. So I have my two half reactions, the zinc in contact with zinc two plus, uh, my oxidation half reaction, copper in contact with copper two plus, my reduction half reactions uh, with the, uh, the electrode with the oxidation reaction is called the anode. The um, electrode with the uh, cath uh, reduction half reaction is called the cathode. And now I need to connect these two electrodes with a wire. And during this reaction, what is going to happen is electrons are going to transfer from the anode to the cathode. So overall, and they'll show this, that this is the negative side and this is the positive side, so that electrons are moving from the negative to the positive side here. So um, just on an aside, most of the time when we talk about redox reactions, we talk about metals. So it's very easy to come up with an electrode. I just use whatever metal that we are involved in. But some half reactions don't involve a metal. And this is an example of it where I go from uh, Br2 plus two electrons to go Br minus. So if I don't have a metal that I can actually use for electrode, typically what they use is a carbon electrode. It's just a piece of carbon and you attach a wire to that. So this is just an aside that if I don't have a metal that I can use, typically use a carbon electrode. Um, so with this now, what's nice is, is once I have connected these two electrodes with a wire, I then can measure the force at which electrons are moving through. And so we need to define that. So that's what a voltmeter does. You probably have used a voltmeter uh, to measure um, electrode potential. It just measures the flow of electrons or how strongly the electrons are being uh, transferred or flowing. I can actually measure that with a voltmeter. So one other piece, this is a little tricky, but it's actually very important. I got to remember that electrons are moving from one side to the other. And if I don't do anything to compensate for it, the electrons will gather on one side and become very negatively charged and electrons are leaving from the other side and will, uh, the other side will become very positively charged. As that goes on, it will become harder to transfer electrons. So I need to compensate for the, the movement of electrons or the movement of charge. And we do this by having a corresponding flow of ions. So what we need to do is connect our two half cells with what's called a salt bridge. And what a salt bridge is, is typically a piece of glass that you've put a gel inside of there. And inside of the gel, you have some soluble ionic species. In this case, we're using potassium, um, uh, potassium nitrate. Um, it could be any of another of a uh, number of soluble salts. And it's once I connect all these pieces together, that's when my electrochemical cell is going to work. So I need to have my two half cells. I got to connect them by a wire, and I also need to connect them by a salt bridge. So this is a better example of what's going on. Um, we take a closer look at it. We still have the anode and the cathode and electrons are moving from the left or the right. Now I can hook up a voltmeter to read um, how strongly these electrons are being moved. But let's take a second and look at the importance of the salt bridge. So overall, if I do this, electrons are being moved from the left or the right. If I don't do anything, the electrons are going to group on the right hand side and that's going to make uh, this uh, half cell very negatively charged. As it's negatively charged, it's going to be harder to put more electrons in there. So I need to compensate for that by putting in something positively charged. So inside of my salt bridge, I have um, potassium nitrate. As this half reaction goes on, the K plus from potassium um, nitrate is going to travel into um, this half cell. And so I'm putting electrons in there. And then I'm also putting K plus and that counteracts the charge. This allows the electrons to keep flowing. The exact opposite is going on over here because electrons are leaving. We are developing a positive charge on the left hand side. I need to put something that is negatively charged inside of there. In this case, it's the nitrate from 
potassium nitrate. So the, the nitrate's traveling over here, it's counteracting the charge. And so this all together allows my voltmeter to continue doing it. And I've actually done that. Um, if you have two half cells and just connect them with a wire, it will work for a moment. But o over time, the, volt, um, the electron flow will slow down and eventually stop, that there will be a concentration of charge and it will actually stop my electrochemical cell from working. So the salt bridge is necessary. So now that we have separated my two half cells into an overall electrochemical cell, we can then say what's going on with my oxidation and reduction half reaction. And overall what we want to look at is what's uh, a measure of the ability of something to give up electrons, what's the measure of the ability for something to gain electrons, and when I combine those two together, it gives me a measure of how well my redox reaction is working, how well is electrons being transferred. So the idea is the ability of electrons being transferred in my overall redox reaction is equal to the summation of the potentials for each of my half reactions. So when I measure this, when I say measure the, uh, how well the electrons are flowing with my voltmeter, what we are reading is voltage. And this is called the cell potential, how well are electrons flowing. And they have a couple of other names for it. It's called the electromotive force, EMF. Um, it's you know, also called the cell potential. But overall, what we're going to be calling it is E cell. This is an overall measure of how well electrons are flowing inside of my overall redox reaction. And what we're going to find out is that that is related to the um, overall cell, uh, half cell potentials of my two half reactions. So if I combine them together, I have the ability of zinc to give up electrons plus the ability of copper to gain electrons. When I combine those two half cell uh, potentials, I get the overall E cell for this reaction. So I need to now look at these half cell reactions. How well does zinc give up electrons? How well does copper gain electrons? So when we talk about potentials, we're gonna be talking about volts, so we'll define that a little bit better. And overall, just in summary, what's happening in my, um, in my electrochemical cell is that electrons are moving from the anode to the cathode. So here we're making electrons, those electrons are traveling along my wire and in here copper 2 plus is grabbing onto those two electrons and during this reaction copper solid is actually forming on my cathode so there's a couple of cool experiments where if you measure or weigh the cathode you can see that it's gaining weight over time and then on my anode electrode the zinc is actually dissolving so zinc is going into solution over time so that's basically what's happening here copper is forming on the cathode zinc is dissolving on the anode and electrons are flowing. And now what we need to look at is how do these two half cell potentials combine together to make the overall cell potential for my redox reaction.